Hello, welcome back to Monster Train. All right, we got uh, the start of a new cycle. We're back to Hornbreaker Prince. How exciting is that, right? How exciting is that? Reasonably so, I would say. Uh, let's just get to it, shall we? I have nothing interesting to tell you today. Uh, it is the afternoon. If you hear any strange sounds in the background, it's probably just the uh, the sound of the outdoors. Although, uh, not even nighttime is safe anymore because some kid's been riding his dirt bike at 4 a.m. down my road. So, you know, it's never safe. Uh, yeah, let's begin. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. You know the deal. Uh, we got Soul Sucker's House. We got Darkness Arcus, which is... Darkness is Spell Shield and Shadow is Curse. I'm almost certain now. And then Sapsara, we are red green with Hornbreak, Glimmer, and Tiresome Climb, Exile Green. Cool. Red green, the classic. If we see Rage Prince, we're gonna pick it, we're gonna look for spikes. Ah, yeah. I mean, the Prospective Imp pick or the Boring Trader's Quill. I just clicked the, the Imp card, because neither of them do anything for us now, and one of them is significantly better than the other in a few choice circumstances. Ever wrathful. I haven't actually had to play Reaper in so long. I'm not sure I even remember. There was a time where I was playing a lot of Reaper Prince, but it has gone, and I have not played much Reaper lately. This course, of course, or this combat is, of course, the one for Wrathful Prince. Since we have no Wrathful, we're going to play it cool. Corgi's a little scary. It might be hard for Prince to scale in this combat. Oh, I'm on 1x speed. What the hell? What happened here? So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to glimmer this floor and we're going to try and pick away at these guys with just torches and horn breaks to give him an extra slay. Hmm. If I put a train steward up top like this, you'll kill one, you'll kill the other, we can horn break torch and that should be good. And then when I draw glimmer I'll clear this bottom floor because this one's just a lot. Uh, or maybe I will not. Perhaps I won't. I mean, this is like a removal. Or I can just guarantee the Glimmer. I'll be guaranteeing the Glimmer is better. Because you know there's two in there. Or rather, you know there's two in the deck and we've seen one. Although Glimmering this floor is good. I think it is right to just Glimmer this and then use Root Seeds to look for the, the Glimmer again. With Root Seeds, it's going to be pretty likely that we see it. But we can also just ping away at these guys until we get there. Oh, hey. Uh, he's not dead. 140. Okay. So, now you gotta piece together what the max damage you can pull off here is. It's gotta be Root Seeds plus Torch. I would call this one a little close. I'm just gonna give it to you straight. This, this combat? A little close. That one was slightly close. It was a little bit closer than I would have liked it to be. Hmm. Now, do I just click every imp because we have Ashes of the Fallen? Yeah, sure. I mean, fudgling of giving uh, what is effectively half of a ritual battle to an entire floor is passable. We can pick this and then see, like, Branded Warrior or something like that. The game uh, continues to taunt me by showing me Sharpen without having shown me the Rage Prince. Of course. What else could we do here? There was nothing. Am I gonna pick Wildwood Sap? Probably not. We're probably going to aim for an imp plan off of Ashes, which Sap doesn't play well in. I guess picking Sap is like keeping our options open, though. Picking Sap is just better for keeping our options open. If we don't end up seeing Wilder Helper in the next combat, we can then pivot towards regen. Uh, we just look for a good tank here, I think, but I think the best tank is going to be red. Hmm. Like, I think the best tank is a... We, we want a tank that is two space for Prince, so we have Prince, tank, and then for an imp. The good tanks in Awoken are three space or rare. Uh, probably the best card we could see here would be Vine Mother. That being said, I should probably just go right because Hellhorn banners are going to be better for us. It's also better if we see like Branded Warrior. He's pretty good there as well. I'm okay with this. Ah. 
Ah, yes. So, basically here, the range brute is great. The end. Like, I'm just gonna click him. He's a really good unit. That's all there is to it. With even just one source of rage in the deck, I think that he's pretty nuts. You get a plus 10 as well. It's good to have the plus 10 holdover glimmer for Seraph, and we can take a few cost downs as well. That's fine. And yeah, we're just gonna, I guess, look for Welder Helpers here. I mean, if we see Welder Helpers here, the run basically ends. Uh, we're gonna use Brute as our tank for the Prince. And then we're going to transition Brute into probably a backline position. I don't know, maybe not. We'll see how it looks, I suppose. We'll see what the future holds. What this combat shows us is pretty important. We need this combat, like, if this combat shows us Welder Helper, then we don't need a tank, we can just make our own. If it shows us something else, then we have a little more thinking to consider. Are you sap? Should hit that imp now, right? I don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah, it gives a little bit. Man, if we had Rage Prince, if I had taken Brawler, it would also be good, but taking Brawler would put us in a much scarier position at this point. Like, getting to this point would be a little more concerning, but after you're here, it would be, uh, you know, money. But I would never commit to Brawler like that, it's kinda suicide. It just seems like a generally bad idea, but yeah, we have a lot of raw power here. No Welder Helper, alas. Uh, I'm going to pick Hidden Passage. Having the ability to move my units around without dazing them seems good. I guess we're going to pivot towards regen here, because I was shown two Wildwood Saps. That's fine as well, I suppose. Seal Shop seems pretty important here, right? I think so. What can we see here? A multi-strike rage 7 on the deranged route seems pretty good for starters. Uh, he's not- he's gonna do fine as the tank for Talos, I think. I think that he should do well enough. The only downside is that we don't have much renewable rage, but he gives so much damage. Like, you gotta understand how much damage it is. And we have the regen. That's right, we kinda just build our own tank. We just have to time it out properly here. Let's we'll see what the cavern says. Oh, imagine if this was the times five and I've got the times five deranged brute. Oh my god, imagine. Uh, I've gone through this a lot of times. In short, just click Stygian. If you're not really sure what's going on, just click Stygian. Ice Empire is a good card in almost every deck. I'm trying to consider a situation where I go, oh no, not Ice Empire. In this deck, there isn't one. 90 damage is really, really good. It just, like, if you, especially with Attuned on it now, if you give it plus 10, it basically answers double heavies for the whole game, which is good, is my official take. That is a good thing to do. Okay, now we just daze her so she doesn't attack. Very interesting that dazing the boss in outside who attacks outside of Relentless stops them from attacking, but it doesn't stop other bosses from, like, taking their turns. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we just did 200 damage to the boss there. That's a good start. So we don't want to play this sap, of course. Uh, we're just gonna ping these guys off. The classic sap trap. Don't play Wildwood sap when it's too early to play it. I didn't actually look at where we lost space, by the way. I should have looked closer. It was middle floor. Okay, now we do take damage because Deranged Brute gets dazed here. Open to hit the Imp to stop the dazed or something, but no. I have decided against it. So we're gonna take four. It doesn't really matter that much. Just get rid of Train Stewards. Uh, yeah, him taking down to 16 is pretty tough. I have healing though, right? That's the crux of the whole plan here is I have healing. This imp comes in at 29 attack, what the hell. I guess I should have put him behind. I'm gonna go ahead and start sapping this boy up now. Maybe we just give him 10 sap and win the game, right? Or rather, 10 regen as a whole. And we win, more or less, is the plan from here. Form break that. Prince doesn't even get to slay anymore because of how much... 
uh, work is being put in by Mr. Brute. He's at 54 by 2. Yeah, nice and nice and easy. Now, we do need to find him a tank, right? Prince is basically worthless, as he is right now. The problem with Slay Prince is he doesn't play well with, uh, uh, if you end up with a different carry than him. He needs to carry or else he doesn't get any kills and then he's just worthless. I'm probably going to click Spreading Spores here and just plan to Hyper Spore the floor because I didn't pick up any armor generators. That's fine. Railbeater is not the tank. I could go Awoken Hollow, I guess, and take space. That might be the what-you-have-to-do-here sort of play. I think it is. I think we just have to click Awoken Hollow, take space, kind of just throw Prince away. Let Brute and Awoken Hollow put it together while you clear backline with Glimmer and then play a bunch of regen. That seems like a pretty straightforward plan, right? Regen for the boss, Deranged Root for the uh, heavies, Glimmer for the backline. Should be fine. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be anyway. Uh, it sucks because he was the draw, but it's like less important because of root seed slightly. And I, like, I'm going to have to end up taking an Awoken tank it looks like, so I will just play it like this and it's fine. I'll miss the draw, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, you know, the other thing I could do is I could just duplicate deranged root. That's pretty strong as well. Brute, brute. And then you throw an imp on that floor, and then you put a Woken Hollow with Prince. Hmm. That does seem pretty good. And we- oh, we, what we could do is we could just do that, and then once the imp goes down, we could work on ascending them. Something like that. Train Steward is the worst card right now. Uh, duplicate the Brute. It's just it's huge damage. It's so much damage. It's, it's actually extremely worth it to pivot over to Wrathful here. Even though he's only going to have 15 health, like, it is. Him plus two Brutes is probably just winning. It's just, it's tough because I didn't take the spikes, right? If I picked up, I have, I have, uh, I have Spreading Spores, though, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to click this. The plan pivots. We just pivot to Wrathful. The lower rage generation doesn't matter because double deranged brute is just crazy. You can win off of two. We just need to be sure that he can handle it. Uh, Heaven Seal, I think we don't have to respect here. There's like, there's a bit of a, an awkward period here as we move forward. It should get smoothed out once we thin the deck out. Like post Arcus, this deck probably just wins for free. We just gotta get past Arcus. Five, nine. Uh, I think it's like this. Yeah, look at that. Although that's mostly him. I ping you? Nah, we'll just ping this. Fine. Up to 44. Mm hmm, okay. Now what, what's he gonna be at? He's gonna get hit once. What is this? Every, every hit ups him by 16. I'm gonna... Oh, I can't ping the imp, of course. My mistake. I just missed the collector. That's okay. He's getting there. We're gonna have to keep the prince alive through some, like, healing magic, I suppose. Except for I decided to not do that, actually. Changed my mind. I've decided to let the prince die. Uh, new plan, new plan. We have this guy up here for... Oh yeah, we have double summon triggers for him too. He has 135 base health. I forgot about that. Way, the way that that works. Of course. He just has an absurd amount of health. I guess you're as good as the brains here. Hmm. Awkward. Oh wait, you suck because you take away my rage. What the hell? Alright. We gotta go to a magic shop and upgrade that spreading spores for sure. And we just glimmer this floor and win, right? Oh, we don't win. Was it seven? Oh, it's because they run out of rage, isn't it? Yeah, they run out of rage and stop doing any damage. They drop down to 12. Now ah, we just do this, it's fine. It's close enough, but there is an awkward period in this run for sure. 
Playing that train steward was probably the killer there. I needed to uh, play the Rage Imp on him. Rage Imp, pretty good for it. That's okay. We get there. We just gotta iron out the kinks in this deck and then we take over. Like, we just fly out of control. Precious Plating will help the... Uh, help it not look so scary. Imp in a Box is also really good with Ashes, of course. Uh, these cards aren't that good. I guess Wildwood Custodian's fine. We have space for him. I took space because I needed it, and now we can play the Wildwood Custodian in that extra space we took. Now we go right. Impsicle would be a huge grab as well. Hold over. Hey, hold over Glimmer. I'm good with that. And then we go ahead and throw a minus one on Spreading Spores, and we leave that open to whatever. Hell's Banner's Queen's Tail. Nothing particularly exciting here. Uh, I'll take the Hell's Banners because it's about as good as Queen's Tail would be. Missing the draw sucks, but the Hell's Banners triggers more often, so... I have enough Pyre Health to trade away for a free artifact. Channel Heart with no stings. You still click it because I think that... Uh, Channel Heart plus... The uh, Preserve Thorns is just nutty, right? It, the run looks really strong, but we're not scaling in a way that makes me confident, especially not into something like this, right? Uh, we're gonna play this one safe. The big problem is just that I had to start with Slay Prince, right? And I'm trying to make that pivot into Wrathful Prince and it's looking weird. Hmm. Huh. I just I, I don't have space for the uh, for the imp right. That's the other big killer here. Nowhere to play the imps. Scary. Very scary when I can't play the imp. Feels like it anyway. Maybe there's nothing to be concerned about. I'm not sure though. He just- Prince can't scale right now. He just can't get those kills going, and he's struggling as a result. Maybe with some spreading spores, spikes, he can get a kill or two. Right, because if he gets a kill or two, he starts to scale like crazy, of course. But getting that kill is very difficult. I wonder if I'm supposed to, like, ascend this guy off the floor. So that I can play the, uh... Play the imps I drew here, right? Because I have all these imps, but like, like if I could play these two imps, we just win the game, right? This floor becomes so high in damage. It's a weird balancing act. It just doesn't make much sense. I guess I'm going to... But like, I lost space up here. Maybe I need to split the brutes? I'm not sure. Getting my own prince here. Should have done that before I did the heal, but it's fine. Prince is strong now. He's taking, he's taking 15, so he's getting the he's getting the double kill here. Put this up here. Yeah. I mean he's close. I will give him that. Let me daze this on the boss. Alright. Great tiresome climb draw. The deck is still close. Like the run is still close. Going into DPS path here is weird. I'm not convinced. I think that I have all this imp value that I'm just missing, right? And it's not good. Fire shards is probably okay. Add something to the pile of things I can play on Prince for spikes. Sure. I, I just don't know what we're doing. It feels super strange. Uh, we're gonna go for removals because we have 32 cards in this monstrosity. Go to the last train steward. Probably start purging torches here? I think so. And then let's look at this magic shop. Permafrost. So what we probably want to aim for here is a spreading spores to zero duplicate sort of plan. Probably where we're heading here. I'll throw by some Pyra plus 10. If we get through Arcus and get to that Rage level 2 Prince, I think it starts to make a little more sense. Although usually you get that multi-strike going and he starts really going, but I don't know. 
See if I have the Arcuses memorized at this point. It is darkness for sure. It is spell shield, okay. We got it. We got there. Okay. Here we are again. At the old classic, what am I doing here? I think we're gonna try a slight pivot in the plan and leave one of these brutes down here. And then I'll put the other one maybe up here, and then I'll just try to ascend, I don't know. Landing. Push damage to Arcus. Very bad to kill any of these, absolutely. And can't spell damage. Maybe some rage here? Awful. Just absolutely terrible. <laughs> just, just horrible. Alright. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and play these mid-floor just to be rid of them. Can't ascend a shard, right? I didn't think so. So, we just throw you a pyre shards and it gets way better, I think. I want to make this- I want to keep these cards cheap, though. So I guess I throw the Glimmer out, and then, I don't know, Tiresome Climb. I guess we just have Tiresome Climb costing, too. And we call that acceptable. Good enough. There. I would say. Acceptable. Now, we cracked the imp box. It is the question of, do I just go all in here? Put the little custodian. I don't get the imp, the fledgling imp here, and I don't get the impish scholar, which has a 50-50 on pulling me back an imp in a box. If I do it this way, but if I do it this way, I get to have the imp value. Hmm. I think I wait on this Brute. We have five waves remaining. I should see him again after I play all my imps. I think it's better to wait. I I believe. And I'm just gonna sap up the Prince now. And we're just gonna turn him into our full carry now that we have spikes on him. He also get- don't forget he gets plus 10 on Slay with that spikes too. So he gets pretty- he gets pretty big. And some of it can't be taken away. Oh, did he lose the kill for me healing him there? No, he was just- that's just the regen going away. Because he would have regen that health, but he didn't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we drop the- the- oh god, the blinding shard. Oh no! That is a disaster. You do not like to see it. Eh, it's okay. I'm just going to have to not play it there, I suppose. I have for my life for one ritual of battle on this run, man. For real. Just one ritual of battle. All I could ask for. But, you know, uh, you see this prince is doing pretty well for himself. He's a lot of damage, but he's not getting a ton of armor. But he also has 15 regen underneath it all, so, you know. 15 regen, worthless against Arcus, I guess I should have considered as well. However, I forgot to consider that. <laughs> uh, Arcus starts next turn. I just gotta drop the range brute. We gotta overpower him. A man has 15 health only. Oh yeah, I just took a bunch of free damage. 8 to be exact. Yeah, Arcus just overwhelms the armor here. Uh, I think I... Maybe send you away for rage? Hmm. Would be a strange one to lose here, right? What can I do about this? I think it is better to send this guy away. His damage... So losing him costs us how much? It's like... We lose three times... We lose 75, but then we gain... Uh, six times five. So we gain 30, plus we gain an extra round from Arcus having to hit this imp. I think it's gonna be better. It was 1247 before, it is now 1502. Yeah, a little better. Hmm. I might still be dead, of course. My man up here is at 1 HP. 
That doesn't inspire much confidence in me, I gotta be honest with you. If only I had put the spreading spores up here, it would have been so much better. Alas, I am a big fool. 48, so you hit twice, so adding a plus two will take you to uh, 60, I believe, is the number there. 14 times four, 40, yeah, 60, no, 56. Uh, we just gotta pull the Ice Empire off the top, I think. Mm. That's not great. I'm not actually sure if he kills me. I'm pretty sure he does, right? 6 times 25. Yeah. That's a real shitty one to lose, I gotta say. Uh, I didn't... I didn't plan that one out very well. I'm gonna be real with you, that was on me. I should have planned a little better, I guess. I should have looked at Prince's health and realized that it was 15 and then put all that regen on the top floor. But, you know, I didn't. Oh man, that sucks. It's just, it's really weird because I tried to do that pivot. It, it's, it's super, I think that one of the things that's the hardest to work out in these runs is, uh, when, like, it, specifically with Prince, I feel like it's always weird when you start Slay and then have to try and pivot into Rage. Like I did there. If we had the multi-strike Prince, it might have been simpler, but I don't know. I guess also if they had just showed me not two Rail Beaters and they showed us instead a Steel Worker, that would have been okay. But, no, nah, I should have just played it a little smarter, I guess. Or I could have just gotten one more Rage card, or one Armor card that wasn't Fortify, right? One more uh, non-Fledgling Imp, or not, just one one more Fledgling Imp or one Wilder Helper would have also done it for us, alas. Uh, or even just like a Ritual of Battle, or a... Uh, I mean, fuck dude, I'd take the Armor Rage card at that point. But yeah, that one was winnable if I had played Regen on the top floor, however... It's really weird. I guess, actually, because Prince at that point would have 25 health, so... Does, does Rage Prince just fucking suck into Arcus? I guess with Regen he does, but you're not supposed to play him with Regen. But, you know. Oh, well. What are you gonna do? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave me a like. Subscribe if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.